with us in the studio now because it's time for Media Watch. It's good to see you, Jay. Evening, Laura. Uh, we're going to start in Ukraine. Of course, we've been talking today about the fall of Jabalsova, which is now in rebel hands. Um, you've right. uh, got some photographs uh, taken by a journalist who's, who's been embedded in the conflict. And, of course, um, international observers haven't been able to get into some of these areas. Uh, let's have a look at the, the picture. All right, this is a journalist, uh, photographer, photojournalist, Max Adviv. Now, he was embedded, uh, as you just said, Laura, with, uh, with rebel fighters, in fact, in the east of Ukraine. And these photos are taken in Logvinova, which is just next to uh, the town of Debaltsevo, which has, of course, fallen into rebel hands. So these are rebel uh, soldiers. Um, pro-Russian and uh, he was embedded with their troops now a lot of there are some mm. 20 or 30 photos on this BuzzFeed uh, article many of which I can't show uh, tonight uh, Laura because they're too graphic they mm. show dead bodies they show a, a, quite a brutal uh, conflict in fact powerful images and very powerful images and you, it's, you can see that it is essentially all out war and uh, indeed you can see uh, quite a number of images as well of uh, trenches being uh, being dug and uh, it shows, I suppose, the behind-the-scenes reality of mm. uh, the conflict there. Also, a lot of other images on social media. That one from earlier today, taken by a photographer, Pierre Com, And uh, they show um, what he describes as pro-Russian rebels fire, firing grad rockets towards the And all Those of this during images. a ceasefire, of course. That's right. And indeed, this headline in Le Monde, I think, uh, is, is it ironic? I'm not even sure. The sound of weapons despite the truce or ceasefire in Ukraine. I'll just finish with this, uh, this headline in the uh, Courier International. Uh, February, which uh, in Ukrainian means ferocious month, mm. which is, I suppose, sadly ironic this year and certainly very true in the east of the country uh, with images such as that. All right, James, thanks very much for that. Well, let's move on to something completely different. Uh, mm. A bunch of football fans. Um, uh, it looks like they were here to support Chelsea. Right. Uh, this Chelsea took on local club Paris Saint-Germain last night. That's right. uh, they took it upon themselves to ride the Paris metro, shouting racist abuse, and then even stop one black passenger from boarding a train. That's right. Now, Pretty gruesome stuff. Gary Lineker called it moronic. Moronic, <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think uh, that many people shared that opinion. What's interesting is it was a British uh, expatriate, uh, Paul Nolan, who's worked for our sister radio channel RFI, amongst other media, who took this video, which I think we, we've already seen on air today, and it, it shows a racist uh, abuse being shouted at this uh, black passenger who was pushed off the train. I mean, just classic mob mentality, uh, stupidity. And uh, indeed, you see later on uh, passengers alighting from the train, getting off because of uh, the general environment of uh, racism. But what's interesting is their faces are, are pretty clear in that image. And the well, yes. video has <laughs> gone absolutely viral. It was given initially to the Guardian's uh, website. And now French media, British media, everybody's talking about it. So they're probably going to be uh, identified. And indeed, as Chelsea Football Club have officially replied, if we find out who they are, they're going to get, they're absolutely going to be banned. And criminal proceedings have been opened in Paris and the football club is very much supporting them, Laura. Great stuff. And, uh, Thank goodness for smartphones. Absolutely. It's, it's a case of, I suppose, uh, Big Brother in a positive sense, uh, showing uh, the, uh, the, I suppose, usefulness of bad behaviour being filmed. He actually spoke to France 24, Paul Nolan, and he said that, uh, that you know, football hooliganism, it happens. You see it, uh, you know, at matches if you're going to football, etc. Yeah, there's a lot of racism as well in football. That's right. But to see, uh, I suppose, this on the Paris Metro, it, it shocked him. He didn't even know that there was a match on. I mean, to travel to another country as right. well and to do that in someone else's subway system right. is really... Exactly. Beyond belief. And indeed, what I found quite amusing about all this is it was just one guy, he didn't even know there was a match on, a British guy living abroad. He sees the scene, takes the video, sends it to The Guardian, and it becomes a massive news story in France and in the UK to the point where The Daily Mirror was doing live updates on their website today <laughs> uh, as if it was a breaking news story with uh, reactions well, from. Well, people have been really shocked about this. They have, they indeed. Uh, David Cameron even responded, calling the incident extremely disturbing. You can see there that that was an update on The Daily Mirror's website at 5 pm local okay, time. Wait waiting for them to be named and shamed and uh, this one to be continued. Um, nice. Let's talk about someone else who's been uh, named and shamed and seen their um, their political reputation absolutely destroyed. Dominique Strauss-Kahn. It's looking that the case against him will be dropped. What's the latest? That's article? right. Well, it's extraordinary. Up in Lille, you've had journalists from around the world uh, who, have, who have been following this trial over the last two weeks. Uh, the former head of the IMF, he was hotly tipped to be the next president of France and he had all of the world's media uh, pointed uh, pointing their attention at him up in Lille. Now we know absolutely all about salacious details. We know what he likes in the bedroom. Let's That's that right. Way. Now, um, actually, just before we get to the to the details of today, that this tweet, I think, by a, a very uh, well-known French Twitter user, sums it up really. Uh, he has never, he has not lost any case, but he's lost 
everything in, sen in some senses as a result of uh, these court cases. So he might be, it's looking, of course, that uh, the, 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 the charges uh, won't uh, reach mm. him or that they won't be dropped. Five of the six plaintiffs are now dropping their accusations. Anyway, the point today that I want to make is... Uh, Political cartoons, uh, or cartoons rather, of the trial. You can't take photographs from inside the, mm. from inside the courtroom. So these sort of sketches oh, have been appearing yeah. all over the media. Now, what did he do, apparently, today? Uh, he approached uh, the cartoonist uh, for France Television, and he said, look, any chance I could get a souvenir cartoon? No. For, before, when the trial is over, a sign. He's shameless. He's shameless. Well, it also shows a degree to which he's confident <laughs> that uh, it, he'll get all free. Closer magazine oh. headlining Maybe here. Maybe he's hoping to sell it on eBay. Well, perhaps. Uh, saying that he's looking for a little souvenir. But indeed, wow. if, that's the, there are the sketches that we're seeing from inside the courtroom. But of course, cartoonists are having a huge amount of fun elsewhere. <laughs> and here you can see a reference to the Minsk uh, summit. You have Angela Merkel and François Hollande saying, uh, there were four of us all night long and the exchanges were some, <laughs> sometimes violent. I'm not, I don't know if there's any double entendre <laughs> there. And uh, Mr strauss kahn who of course was tipped to be the next French president, saying, I could have done a better job than that. And his, uh, the, the, the books uh, alongside him there are, of course, Fifty Shades of Grey and The Marquis de Sade. Oh, James, you're sailing close to the wind with that one. <laughs> We'll Can I say, this is, this is what you're finding <laughs> all over the media. <laughs> James, thank you very much indeed. James Green is there with a very saucy video. <laughs> all right, moving on now, it's time for our focus report. Now, the number of French Jews leaving for Israel doubled last year. Around 7,000 made the move, the largest number of people making Aliyah, as it's known, of any country in the world. Well, the Paris attacks and the more recent shooting at a synagogue in Denmark prompted Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to call on all of Europe's Jews to move to Israel.